On this episode of the History of the Course podcast with Curtis and Josh, we finish our look at the band from Whitby, Ontario, Canada, known as Protest the Hero. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at IsSurvivedByPro for news and the latest episode postings. And make sure to subscribe to the show, leave us a five-star review, and write us a comment on YouTube or whatever podcast service you're using. And if you'd like to see us do some live streams, leave us a comment or tweet us the keyword stream. Now, without further ado, let's start the show. The devil is in Atlanta, <laughs> army surrounded. My sisters and brothers, they hated so bad to see me go west like someone got mud to leave all my loved ones and kiss them goodbye, just hoping I'd see them in the sweet by and by. Welcome back to the History of the Course podcast, sponsored by the Church of the Seventh Track, where each and every episode, we take a look at the history of a band from the core genre. I'm Curtis, with me as always. He's irreplaceable. He could die and his ghost would still do this podcast. My co-host, Josh. Party on, Josh. Party on, Curtis. What's going on, buddy? Oh, just uh, kicking myself in the teeth for not uh, doing things your way and just listening to the instrumental versions of these next couple albums. You got to play it smart, buddy. You got to play it smart. I I'll just say it now. I am convinced that they should just go pure instrumental. Why waste your time with uh, the lyrics? You know, takes more time because then you got to you got to write the lyrics. Then you got to put the lyrics to the music. Whereas you already have the music, you know, and and it's good. Every track is good, you know, musically. So, I mean, just, you know, just cut out that guy. Do you remember that there were times um, where I said his vocals reminded me a lot of Iron Maiden? Yes, and I heard it more. (laughs) I did too, but (laughs) it also made me think of another band that I haven't thought of in a long time. Uh Oh, here we go. uh, Which was Caroline Spime. Uh, Because there was definitely a couple tracks where I was like, okay, am I listening to Caroline Spine? Am I listening to (laughs) Iron Maiden? What's going on here? (laughs) If Carolina Spine and Iron Maiden had a baby, a this Canadian just, baby, this does not fit. Like his vocal style does not fit. No. Oh. Well, and like he's okay. So I did, I did sample like a couple of songs from uh, Palimpsest with vocals, and it's just like by that time his vocals have changed so much too that, like, I didn't mind it in Kazaya and. Uh, fortress the way that he does it vocally but it's like his vocals have changed so much and then the other thing too is um, I think we kind of messed up on the last episode so up until Volition which is going to be the first album that we talk about in this episode all the lyrics have been written by their bassist Arif so he's very and I there's a review that I'm going to read here and I think it's the last one where he said something about, I don't know, he, the guy was describing, oh, uh, he's, he calls RF's lyrics dense illusions, which, yeah, I mean, basically, I mean, I feel like sometimes he's you get dense. These, that's, yeah, I, that's for sure. I feel, I feel, yeah. sometimes I feel like you get these bands that their music is, it's technical, but it's, uh, mm, I don't know. I mean, it's it's really good musically and it's going pretty fast. I mean, it's it's pretty technical. And I feel like sometimes the lyricist feels like he has to keep up and be like, oh, I got to match that energy. So I got to I got to make all these crazy, uh, you know, lyrics that nobody gets. And nobody understands. And it's mysterious. And it's like just you don't have to do that, though, man. You know, simpler just, is better. Just simpler is better. 
But unfortunately, <laughs> they went a little too simple when Rhodey took over, talking about pit bulls and whatnot, whatever that was about. Which, again, that may be a Canadian thing. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Rhodey takes over lyrically from volition to the present. So you get two, two sides of the coin here. So, yeah. Uh, before we get into that, Josh, we got a couple, couple of things to talk about. One, we had a brand new episode of the History Course After Hours podcast come out this week, all about the band known as Maylene and her sons of disaster. Here's a preview for you right here, right now. Behind this band, did that just kind of like draw you in even more? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, I mean, that's just... I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I mean... That's just sick. Living yeah. in Oklahoma, we've got, you know, places where uh, this gang in particular hung out. We yeah. got... Uh, I think it was Jesse James hung out. I believe so, in, yeah. Uh, There's actually a cave called Robber's Cave down in South mm -hmm. Oklahoma. And... uh that's apparently where I think that was Jesse James, if I remember correctly. I had a little hideout for sure a minute. Right. Yeah. And I mean, so just coming from that kind of background, having that kind of all around us, that's pretty cool. And like I said, it just kind of drew me in a little bit more. I think I, the fact they're already fantastic. Yeah. I think I talked to you more on the history side here of, you know, like Ma Barker and her gang being here, you know, back in even like that time when they were around in like the thirties, you know, you talk about Oklahoma and like the 20s, the oil boom, and even before that, when it was just Indian territory before statehood. I mean, there's a lot of like, you know, outlaws and rebels that would come through here and just hang out because, you know, it was either it was just Indian territory and nobody really had any jurisdiction around here or, yeah, just kind of the oil boom just kind of drew a lot of a lot of different types of people around. Uh, kind of like uh, exactly kind of like. um the uh, the gold rush, you know, in California back in the day. Oh yeah. But all righty, uh, that is a brand new episode of the After Hours podcast. If you want the full thing, make sure to go check that out. After you're done with this episode, don't don't stop it. Just keep watching. Trust me, we've got some we've got some good takes coming up, right, Josh? Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You know it. All righty, Josh, it's time for our weekly What'd You Listen To this week. Mine was inspired by the way that I listened to Protest the Hero this week. Okay. These are all instrumental bands. <laughs> so <laughs> they never had vocalists. They decided, you know what? We don't need that bull crap. We're going to let our instruments speak for us. Um, this one, which which hand am I? Okay, this one is a band called. Well, it wouldn't come up for some reason. Uh, it's called "Feed Me to the Waves." This one is called "This Will Destroy You," and then this one behind me is called "Menis." Whoops, meniscus. Yeah. Uh, this one's album is Wilderness. This one, I think, is ST. Don't know what the hell that is. And then this one behind me from Meniscus is War of Currents. That is War of Currents. Yeah. So I was feeling uh, instrumental. Got my post-rock vibes. So, okay. yeah. What about you, Josh? A little Coheed and Cambria? Are you back on the, are you back on the wagon? I did, I don't want to talk ah. about it. <laughs> no, go ahead. Please. Please show us. <laughs> no, I mean, I just, I of course, I listened to Silent Earth and Good Apollo. I mean, what am I supposed I did, to do? Fool. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> not I listen not to, listen to, to it. Uh, what the hell is that? Um, so it's a horsey. Kind of uh, coming from our conversation a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago about Nintendo Core. Um, mm -hmm. I yep, just last week. listened to my favorite uh, album by Horse the Band, R. Borlax. What does that even mean? No idea. Okay. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Of course, it's a band that doesn't make sense. Yeah. But yeah, it's always been my favorite Horse the Band album. So it's like, oh, I'll jump in there on a little bit of that. They don't and have a whole lot to choose there. from, though, right? No, they have a couple albums. Three, four but... full lengths. They haven't put one out since like no. 
2010, 11, and they're still technically a band. Nah, nah. Well, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing, guys? It's been 14 years. What was happening? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Kind of interesting. 14 years is the line. That's the mark. That's the mark? Okay. Yeah. No more. You're done. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. Uh, there's got to be a point where it's like, okay. Come on. Come, Come on, on, guys. Come on. Come on. Cool. Anything else? Um, nope. Dang, man. I was really hoping we'd get a Coheed and Cambria shout out. No, oh, I mean, well. uh, <laughs> you gonna flash, uh, you gonna flash, uh, flash an album up there real quick, <laughs> like subliminal messaging. <laughs> oh, man. No, is he? I can tell he's working, he's working on it, he's got <laughs> something. He's things just got a fun happening. picture here. Things, things are, are happening, happening. big things are happening, people. Big, big, humongous things. Five, four. Three. All right. Nice. <laughs> cool. All right. And moving on. <laughs> Did you actually listen to that? No. <laughs> oh, here's another one. And maybe one more. One more for the road. No. There's that one that has okay. all of them all right. on there. <laughs> and then there's that. <laughs> just just don't look at Zayo over there. <laughs> yeah, right, just disregard cool, the Zayo. All righty, Josh, you ready to close the chapter on Protest the Hero? Yes. Let us do that. Let us finish <laughs> our look at the band known as Protest the Hero. Our watch is going crazy tonight. Very popular. Very popular. All right, Josh, where we left off. <laughs> Curtis, come move stuff for us with your truck. Yeah, basically. Basically, the life of a truck driver. Uh, our current lineup when we last left off was Rody Walker on vocals, Luke Hoskin on guitar, Tim Millar on guitar, RF on bass, and Mo Carlson on drums. Don't worry, people. We're about to cut three of those guys out by the end of this episode. After spending the next two years touring off and on, the band would announce at the beginning of 2013 their intentions to write record, and release their next album by summer of the same year, though it wouldn't come out until the fall of that same year, liars. It was also announced that their new album would be funded by the fans, oh boy, through a campaign on Indiegogo as the band expressed that they, quote, finally decided to take matters into their own hands rather than signing a contract with a label deciding to self-release it. Now, we can both agree we do like this move, though, right? What? One more time. A little louder. I yeah, said so we like the move, but uh, they shouldn't have done that. That's not for them. That's not a move for these so? guys. No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. So there is a limit on who should do this, is what you're saying. This is the yeah. first I'm hearing. Yes. Well, I mean, I don't expect some like local band to start doing that or whatever, but. Especially these guys are probably on, just like better early on, though. Like these guys are better under a label than they are later on. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, the goal, Josh, was set at one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Not sure if that's Canadian or American. Don't really care. One hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Ha. Huh. And that goal, Josh, would be met within thirty hours, totaling out. In the end, to three hundred and forty-one thousand one hundred and forty-six rubies at the end of the campaign, <laughs> dude. What the fuck for for what we're getting into? That's that's what that paid for. I'd like a refund, please. I'd like a refund, dude. You know, most of that money Actually, just went to them. You know what? I take that back. If you're gonna get double, triple of what you asked for. The least you could do is give me some instrumental versions. I mean, that's not that hard, right? It's like a day's work. You just copy, take paste, the vocals out, delete yeah. vocals, copy, paste, delete vocals, copy, paste, delete vocals. It's not that hard, right? It's like maybe two hours work, maybe. 
a little bit break in there, you know, for some stretching and uh, cramping. I don't know. Anyway, just before the recording session would begin, the founding member Mo Carlson on drums would leave the band to pursue higher education. Smart move. As the band would turn to Lamb of God drummer Chris Adler to fill in for the upcoming recording sessions of what would become Josh 2013's Volition from Razor and Tie Records. Produced by Cameron McClellan. This is the last album for RF on bass. The producer, Cameron McClellan, would also contribute some bass to this album. So it seems RF is one foot in, one foot out. This album debuted at number 20 on the Billboard 200 and won a Juno Award for Metal slash Hard Music Album of the Year in 2014. Now, Josh, you heard me say Razor and Tie Records name, but wait a minute. I thought they were releasing it on their own. Well, they are, but you still need to market it, Josh. You still need somebody to give it a little oomph. That's where Razor and Tie Records come in. Gregory Haney of AllMusic.com wrote in his review of the album, quote, Continuing along with the more grounded approach the band took on 2011's Scurrilous, Protest the Hero returned with Volition, an album of driving technical metal that once again puts the Canadian prog metal outfit's considerable music- musicianship that had a stroke there on display. A rapid-fire collection of intricate guitar work and soaring vocals delivered at a breakneck pace. Volition is an album that hardly gives listeners a chance to catch their breaths as it blazes from track to track. At any other speed, Protest the Hero's songwriting might seem sprawling, but given the intensity of their playing, the whole thing comes across feeling fairly compact instead. If there's anything superfluous, Going on, it's simply happening too fast to worry about it. And while this means that it takes more than one listen to really take in what's going on, the album is solid enough that a second pass is a welcome proposition. Do you uh, do you take that proposition on, Josh? Will you listen to it for a second time? Um, I mean, I've gone through these albums a couple times each. No, oh, okay. I didn't know if you already did or but not. Not if I didn't have to songs on this album and i mean nobody had a gun to your head songs on this album include clarity drumhead trial tilting against windmills without prejudice yellow teeth plato's triplet tri- or tripet tri- tri- plato's triperatite a life in boat all right a life in <laughs> miss is good it's gonna be a great episode already Mist, Underbite, Animal Bones, and Skies. What was the song you were talking about earlier? That was on Volition. That you're the lyrics. Um, a life in yeah, a life in Boss. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, Josh. Here's your chance. Tell me how much you loved Volition. Uh, I mean, I just wish this one, like you were saying, the others have, um just the instrumental i'm surprised that i'm like just the music version the music just the instrumentals Um, yeah i'm surprised that there there wasn't one for this why is there one for the others there's one for uh one of the ones before this yeah they do fortress like fortress but they don't see and that's the weird thing they don't do it for scurrilous or even kazaya which is kind of weird. It's like you did it for the last two. And obviously I'm sure you came back and did it for Fortress as like an anniversary thing. But then you don't, I mean, it's like, I'm surprised they didn't go back and just do it for all of their albums overall. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Unless they're just like, no, you have to listen with the lyrics. I don't know. What do you make of uh, the album artwork here? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um the main one um it's interesting it's like a bird with a scope attached to him yeah it's like or, a vulture I guess it's like some his eye. weird like steampunk yeah i don't know like, um uh, my question is have you seen the uh del- i think it's deluxe version where'd that go i had it pulled up just a little bit ago 
Um, go look up uh, Protest the Hero Volition Deluxe version. Because it's it's got some interesting uh, some interesting artwork there. Uh, it's the alternative cover. It's on Wikipedia, but I mean, you should probably be able to see it on Google. Uh, yeah. Tell me when you find it there. <laughs> it's like, oh, that doesn't help me at all with the album. I don't, I still don't understand what's happening. But, oh, and I guess there's a pit bull on the back of uh, <laughs> the album artwork. Like it's on like the backside with the tracks. A bunch of vultures with all those things on their heads. And uh come on, do it. Tell me. I mean there's a naked lady and it looks mm-hmm. like uh mm-hmm. one of the birds is banging her. Yep. Uh, what am I looking at here? I don't know. I don't know. What the uh, fuck? Here's here's a different question for you. Why? What 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 is this? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's got to be something more about this. Amazon is selling Volition by Protest the Hero. It says format audio CD for 149 bucks. There's no way. There's got to I mean, be something. There's, there's no be something CDs anymore, this. Curtis. I think. I, but for 149 bucks, they don't make them anymore. I don't care. 149 bucks. That makes no sense. I mean, I understand that it says there's only four left in stock, but uh, I mean that. Anyway. Okay, so that very first uh, Gym Class Heroes album that like nobody's ever heard of. It's like skate rap. Um, But yeah, I was trying to find that one time and yeah, physical copies of it, dude, go for really high because there's just none of them out there. That's weird. Which I get. Yeah, I mean, I I get that. Yeah, dude, think about like you've always... Is that album so popular though? Volition? No, but... That popular? (laughs) Oh, no, but I mean, if it's... Okay, I'll say this though, man. It is the only album that they have on here that the Spotify numbers are like pretty consistent, consistent. in the one, two, and three millions through the whole album. Um, all of the others kind of they rise and drop, and True. there'll be some that you know around five hundred thousand, seven hundred thousand. So I don't know. I think this was a pretty well received album. It's not by us. Not by me. Which, who yeah. cares what we think, right? I yeah. mean, they raised 300 whatever thousand dollars. I, you know. Again, enough to give me some instrumental rest. Right. So I can enjoy it that way, you know. God, they would have they would have been such a good, like, post-rock band. Oh, well, what are you going to do? Maybe he'll quit the band one day. Of course, there'll just be one guy left, so what's the point then? It's just a solo project. Yeah, it's too I've, late now. I, I've known there's there's post rock bands out there that's just like one or two guys, so it's possible. Alrighty, uh, you got anything else for uh, Volition there, Josh? No, I just I really hate that this band makes me feel the way I do about them, and it's mostly because of the vocals and the lyrics. Yeah. Like without that, this is a great post rock instrumental band, but not your cup of tea. I was going to say that I found the album artwork interesting from the main one here, but then you had me look at that other one. And <laughs> now I just think it's kind of weird. Like, ah, no, I don't like it. Very, very yeah. strange. I remember the first time I saw that, I was like, what? 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 What is that? What are they doing to her? No, yeah. it doesn't do oh that. Oh my god! <laughs> Why are you letting them do that to you? Yeah, that's uh... okay. Anyway, 
Never look at a vulture the same way. <laughs> Steampunk vultures. Band name. Um, I there was something else. I I'm gonna be interested to see what Eric thinks about this band. I don't even know if he's ever listened to them before, because I feel like it, they're kind of up his alley. Maybe I don't know. So I'll be I'll be interested. I think yeah. at least musically they are, but I vocally and lyrically I'll be very interested to see what he says. But just before the album's release, it was announced that the former The Kindred drummer Mike Irata would take the vacant spot left by Carlson. Get the hell out of here, Lamb of God drummer. Founding bassist RF would not be replaced, but instead the band would decide to use session bassist and touring musicians in the future. Well, is he is he too good to replace? What's what's the problem here? Yeah. You know? I mean, I guess we talked about it before bases. You you can get away with it sometimes, you know. But I feel like in a band like this, sometimes you need a full time bassist, you know, with some of the technical stuff going on. But right, I know. In the fall of 2015, the band would embark on a short Canadian tour to celebrate the 10th anniversary of their debut album, Kazaya, where the band would play the album in its entirety. The next two years would be spent touring off and on until an announcement in the fall of 2015 was given to fans stating that their next release would not be a conventional album, what? No. but would instead be a subscription-based release of six tracks through the online music service Bandcamp. Just give me the just give me the music. Why we got to do all this stuff? Why be why be fancy? You know. Uh that is 2016's Pacific Myth EP, which by the way feels way too long to be an EP. Just saying, that's my personal opinion. Produced by Cameron McClellan, it peaked at number 115 on the Billboard 200 once again being released independently but distributed and marketed through razor and tie records each of the songs including artwork instrumental versions and high quality downloads were released through Bandcamp once per month to paid subscribers <laughs> i thought about something we had talked about not so long ago on an episode uh where we were we were talking about somehow we got onto Bandcamp. And I think I had asked you, are you like me, that if uh, an album was like, hey, pay pay what you can, like, oh, I'm so putting zero dollars in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Zero dollars. <laughs> uh, don't mind if I do. <laughs> That's what I can pay me. <laughs> it's always guys. like, are you sure? <laughs> like, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> yes. That had to be like one of the dumbest things ever. It's like, I, I don't know. It's, it's so dumb to me when it's like, you can pay whatever you can. All right, I can pay you zero dollars. Oh, really, man? Are you sure? You can't give us like a dollar maybe or 25 cents or a penny? <laughs> Nothing? No, I want it for free. Give me my free download. Um, uh, let me uh, let me share my screen real quick. Uh, I don't know if I want to. You're going to mess on. up the background. You're going to mess up the background. What is it? Come on. What is it? Come on. Okay. So when I was. Ooh, wait this... a minute. What'd you say? What's your name? Oh, uh, Rod I'm, Kick-Ass, I'm Rod nice. Kickass now. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I, when I was looking at this album cover, the only thing I could think of was the album Rise or Die Trying by Four okay. Year Strong. That album. Interesting. Art. Interesting. It's, it's manta rays in space, like the sharks and the squid. That is nice. All. Uh, nice dicks on your background there. All righty, moving on. <laughs> the mushrooms. Wow. Uh, <laughs> uh, Doctor Verm of AngryMetalGuy.com wrote in his review of the album, "Quote." Pacific Myth initially sounds like a continuation of the clean-cut scale barrage that the quintet embodied for the last half decade. If extended along the lines of opening tracks Ragged Tooth and Tidal, Pacific Myth would have been competent, if uninspiring. Uh, 
Those preferring the band's post-fortress absence of snarl might be contented, but ju- only just. Even their biggest fans must admit that the, that the memorable pop and prog peaks scaled on 2011's Scurrilous and 2013's Volition likely marked the masterful climax of that direction. For Protest the Hero to maintain rev- relevance, as with any band, their new material demanded innovation. Third slated cold water fuses comfort with exploration, a dichotomy that only slants farther to the latter as the EP progresses. In recent years, Rhodey Walker's wordplay commanded increasing amounts of prominence. They often seemed necessary to adhere Luke Hoskins' insane technicality to the rest of the music. See, that's what I'm saying. It's like sometimes your music's going so hard that you feel like I got to go gotta go just as hard, if not harder, lyrically. Right. You know, it's not yeah. a competition. It's not a competition, man. Thankfully, Cold Water moderates its arpeggio reliance with a proggy midsection that mat- uh, maturely avoids beating its standout hook to death. At one point, the track drops the lead guitar altogether, favoring an unexpected bass and keys pairing. Cataract takes this progression one step further, demanding a hard-edged performance from all parties involved. The result is undoubtedly protest the hero, catchy, and blistering. But its groovy heading marks a huge departure from the expectations set even from the start of Pacific Myth. After hearkening back to Fortress with well-placed piano and throwback growls on Harbinger, the band closed Pacific Myth with the longest track they've ever released. Caravan cycles through su- uh, sugary, sweet, standard, fair, increasingly unhinged frenetics and prominent keyboard digression. As Walker expresses his exhaustion with conceptions that bring nothing new from the womb, I get the sense that the band intended Pacific Hit Myth to gradually expose fans to the next era of protest, the hero. I can't say I'm surprised given the band's refusal to stagnate and their enduring commitment to the message the bloom may be off the rose for walter walker but i cannot wait to see where protest the hero go next with this closing address walker sums up a mantra i hope embodies the band's work ethic for years to come are you satisfied don't be satisfied songs as ep include ragged tooth title cold water Cataract featuring Michael Cecilia of Mandroid Echo Star, Harbinger, and Caravan. You ever heard of Mandroid Echo Star? No. Sounds like a crazy technical band. Yeah. With some electronics in it. Woo, 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 woo. Josh, what'd you think of the EP 2016? What are you um, like me? Does it feel too long to be an EP? Uh, no, I mean, it's only six tracks. I mean, they are kind of long tracks. There's two at six minutes, no, three at six minutes, one at five, one at 840. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just kind of long tracks, but. Mm-hmm. Um, this whole run today felt long, bro. Like from Volition <laughs> through this one to the one after, it felt very, uh, very, very long. Can I tell you why? Why? Because it wasn't for me. Except Volition. <laughs> because the last two albums for me were just instrumentals. <laughs> yeah. Which makes it easier because then it's like you're not. You you can kind of that's one thing that I like about post rock and instrumental bands. It's like you can just kind of go, you can put it on, you can just kind of go out throughout your day and not really worry. I feel like when I get a band that has, you know, vocalist and lyricist, it, it draws me to like pay attention. You know, I want to hear what they're saying. I want to know what they're talking about and how they're doing it, so on and so forth. So for me, it made it a lot easier because it's just like, boop, all right, let's go, you know. Right. Well, I mean, I felt like I had to because that's who the band is. Like, they're not a post-rock instrumental, you know? Uh, I'm hoping one day. Uh, well, here's hoping. Here's um, the hoping. 
I really like the album artwork on this one. Hopefully, on the alt side, there's not a bunch of manta rays banging somebody, but I don't know with them. So. You might want to go on Google, Josh. No. Yeah, you might. No, I'm just kidding. I was like, dear God, please tell <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, and then all. and then the last album, it's got a bull on it. So oh, you know where let's that's not. going. Let's not. <laughs> and, he, and he's still wearing the American flag while he's doing it. Oh, my God. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, it's just the same problem that I have with all of them. His vocals don't fit like what they're trying to do. And it's a shame that they never really figured that out. Yeah. But I mean, as well, far they, as... they think it works. And obviously their fans think it works, thinks it works too, you know? Yeah. It just, it makes me think of a band like, let's say, Disturbed. It's like they have some sick riffs, but you'll never be able to get past the vocals, you know? Yeah. Like throw a good vocalist in there and see if that's not an infinitely better band. Disturbed would make a great post-rock band. <laughs> no. No, they would not. No. No, they would not. Doesn't work for everybody. Doesn't and then work for everybody. Musically, like I I do really like this one. It it's good like all of the others. There's the music's not the problem here. You know, it's never been the problem since the no. first album. No. Um, I will say though, Curtis, that I think you're standing alone on a rock in the middle of the ocean because all of their instrumental stuff has like not even a fraction of the plays that Yeah, and that's what I'm saying is well, for one thing. It's a deluxe ver- deluxe edition. I there's no telling when the deluxe edition actually came out. Right. Um, but yes, I'm I'm with you too of yeah, I'm on an island. But uh I mean it's been um, two years and a lot of these tracks on Palimpsest only have like oh yeah twenty thousand views, thirty thousand. Hmm. Weird, but even the, if I go uh, except back for the, except to for like the interlude Fortress, tracks, dude, like that's interesting. Fortress, there's, I mean, the album itself is kind of up and down, but yeah, no, I get it. Once you get into the instrumentals, though, there's tracks that are, you know, there's one that's five million, but then there's also one that's a hundred thousand, right? Um, um, well, like I said, I mean, they're they they enjoy doing the vocals. They enjoy their lyrics, and obviously the fans enjoy, the true fans of Protest the Hero enjoy. The real ones. The real ones. You know who you are, those, those hosers. Those hosers. You hosers. Uh, which, I, again, Josh, I think this is a good time for a little um, a little uh, a statement from uh, from us here at the History of the Chorus podcast. Uh, we're just here. We're just two guys. We're just two cool dudes. Just you know, enjoy Just a music. Couple of crazy guys. Oh, you know we uh, we enjoy music and uh, we like to talk about different bands, bands that we know, and bands that we don't really know. You know, and uh, when it comes to bands that we don't really know, we don't really enjoy it very much. That's just our opinion, right, Josh? You know, right? We're just, and we're, we're we're we get some credit there. We both played in bands. We're both right. musicians. So we've got some. We didn't go anywhere, but something to weigh in, you know. Yeah. At least as yeah. far as an, a musical opinion goes, but right. Yeah, but I mean, for sure. Obviously, yeah. we always say these numbers don't lie. You right. know, like at the end of the day, except for Taylor Swift, I, I didn't. I don't know what the hell's going on there. Three hundred thousand dollars <laughs> to put together a new album. They did. So... No, you did not. No, I heard that music. It was not worth it. <laughs> it was terrible. You should have heard my three hundred thousand dollar album. It was amazing. Uh, oh God, it was horrible. <laughs> when I sampled that one clip, oh, black fire. <laughs> oh, man, nice. Uh, 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 black fire. <laughs> it was a sword of kings. Uh, it was a great iron sword, man. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, classic. Um, yeah. Anyway. It's our it's it's the facts and our opinions on those facts. 
So yeah, as always, check it out yourself. All right, Josh, let's uh, let's head on out. Let's get it. Let's get on to the next album. You want to? Yeah. Yeah. At the start of 2017, the band would head back to the States to tour with August Burns Red in Hearts, Wake, and a little duo band known as 68. Finishing off 2017, the band would embark on a short five-show Canadian tour with Red-Handed Denial, The Frame Defect, and Earth's Yellow Sun. The band would plan to celebrate the 10th anniversary of Fortress on tour, playing the album in its entirety, just like they did with Kazaya. But, Josh, just as the tour began, it would have to be canceled, as frontman Rody Walker developed vocal issues that, if not taken care of, could cause irreparable damage. I believe that's called Sonny Moore's disease. Sonny Moore syndrome. Yeah. 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 Before starting the anniversary tour, the band had begun writing and recording material for a new album, as this too would have to be put on the back burner for the time being until Walker could heal. The rest of 2018 and part of 2019, Walker would continue to heal his vocals while also welcoming his firstborn child into the world, describing the eventual return to recording and fatherhood, saying, quote, This record was extremely difficult for me personally. With my first child on the way, I built a studio in my basement to ensure I wasn't leaving my wife alone with a new child for weeks on end. I haven't left my house since i haven't bathed in debt no never mind we all know josh what happens in 2020 do we have to talk about it again really don't need to because i think everybody lived through it enough and unlike most bands josh that we've talked about protest the hero would decide that they had waited long enough we will tour even though venues aren't taking us we will tour and no not that far uh they decided they waited long enough and would go ahead and release their new album and opted to release it in the summer of 2020. Smack dab in the man in the middle of the pandemic. That is Palimpsest from Spine Farm Records. Produced by Daria Nagel and Millen Petzelsaurus. On the concept of the album, frontman Rody Walker told Loudwire, quote, well, it was being written like three years ago. Trump had just taken office and all this stuff was happening. All the MAGA hats were out in full force and all sorts of stuff like that. And I started thinking about the definition of greatness. And I have a feeling people are going to view this as though it's taking talking negatively about the United States. And that is not entirely it because the greatness that Donald Trump and all his cronies want to return to is only great for the old white, male, rich, elite. This is the greatness of America that the rest of the world views as its tragic tragic flaw. And I wanted to discuss that aspect of things, but I also wanted to discuss the greatness that we actually view as America's greatness. Because there is greatness. There's beauty. There's all sorts of stuff. There's innovation. There's an incredible history. And I wanted to discuss both the negative and the positive and identify what I personally find the greatness to be. Nice. Nice. The album's topics include lyrical subjects such as Amelia Earhart, Florence Owens Thompson, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Peg Inwistle, John Dillinger, the Hindenburg disaster, the Lakota tribe, the Great Depression, and the Great Molasses Flood of 1919. Channing Freeman Josh of SputnikMusic.com wrote in his review of the album, quote, <laughs> Protest the Hero became a stronger band once RF stopped writing lyrics. Do you agree or disagree, Josh? Mm, disagree. It stayed the same? Yeah, I would say it was almost better in the beginning because at least then they were telling like, I don't know, this album, I don't care about any of these stories. I mean, I would care about them in a history sense, 
but I don't care to hear them from Protest the Hero. I'm like, dude, tell your own story. Yeah, yeah, hoser. Go back to Canada. I, right? I don't. That's what I'm translating, what you're saying. You don't like okay. Canada. You think I'm saying, <laughs> hey, you syrup chuggers, you, <laughs> you're doing this wrong. That's what you're you doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. What's so um, great about Canada? Yeah, I don't know. I just don't like I don't like albums like this. I don't necessarily like bands like this. They just do like their gimmick is that they're doing like history stuff or whatever. I'm like, dude, tell your own story. Then I pick up a history book if I want to hear that, you know? Yeah. Uh, continuing on here in the review, quote, that might sound like a statement designed to court controversy and i don't mean to disparage the work that he did on kazaya fortress and scurrilous where lest we forget he pinned sect tapes a song often misattributed to frontman Brody walker rf set the tone for the band's music on those records a tone that persists even years after he left however walker was never truly able to come into his own in the early years despite the continued popularity of protest the heroes first few albums trying to fit another author's lyrics into music he did not write nor play walker repeated words nonsensically crammed phrases together and separated clauses into different sections of songs that the results were as reliably great as they were is a testament to his ear for melody however now that many have decided the band's best years are behind them Walker and the rest of the group have finally come into their own. After years of turmoil, the lack of a record label, the departure of founding members RF and Mo Carlson, and vocal troubles for Walker, Paul Obsessed feels like both a fresh start and a culmination. After surgery and an extensive retraining, Walker's voice is fuller and more resonant, and he is now capable of hitting higher notes without sounding strained. No longer relying on constant overdubs, his performance is more consistent throughout and full of confidence that sees his voice sounding nakedly vulnerable one moment and explosively soaring in the next. He has proven himself to be an able lyricist, less prone to the dense illusions of RF and more willing to be open and at times even obvious. He expounded on his approach to writing with the closing track of Pacific Myth, saying that so-called concept albums purported to be something about something are often meaningless. Some may not appreciate that Walker's write what you mean method has led to songs about Newfoundland and pit bulls mm. rather than fully formed records like kazaya but it is undeniable that he sounds far more comfortable seeing his own words yes josh the newfoundland song was lame too name yeah, the rest lame. of the bit the rest of the band are still technical but less prone to flashiness the music is not as outwardly complex as it is as it sometimes was on previous records and the riffs are chunkier than their typical lead heavy approach while paul Cess takes the piano interlude approach of fortress and expands on it turning the interludes into named tracks the band also finally found a way to implement luke hoskins skillful playing within the songs making for a more varied listen that breaks up the potential monotony of cons of constant guitar assaults. Orchestration abounds on many tracks, and the expansive production makes room for it alongside the typical packed songwriting of the band. Songs rarely tread the same ground twice, and Walker's lyrics about the early 20th century that supposedly made America great are perfectly complemented by the alternatively chaotic and restrained music. Though the title of Palmas Palm Palm Cest, woo, is intended to describe the way Americans rewrite their history in favorable ways, it can be applied to the history of protest the hero as well. They have consistently reinvented themselves from seemingly blank slates on which the past is faintly visible. RF is gone, but his progressive politics have echoes in Walker's writing. The breakneck leads and spastic riffings Riffing of Kazaya and Fortress have been refined and molded to better suit an older, wiser band. Whatever comes next, traces of palimpsest will hopefully remain. Songs on this album include The Migrant Mother, The Canary, From the Sky, Harbor Side, Interlude, All, All Hands, 
the fireside soliloquy reverie little snakes mountainside interlude gardenias hillside interlude and the finale rivets with a couple of bonus tracks which ended up turning into a short two-song ep fabula and suzette that is gift horse and the dueling cavalier well josh I will say from a music perspective, because yeah, I can't really talk lyrically, you know, or vocals. Um, one thing I did like that they introduced on this album was the orchestration. I do like that. I do like that a lot. Kind of added a depth to the music. Because sure. we were we were already we were already, you know, good with the with the drums and you know, the guitars, everything like that. But I feel like you just, like I said, you added another layer with the orchestra uh, orchestra, and that helps out a lot. Yeah. And there's a cool, there's a couple of cool spots. I know one of them is in um, From the Sky Mm -hmm. that almost sounds like kind of cartoony the way they do Mm -hmm. it or almost like a video game. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Yeah. definitely interesting. Yep. For sure, man. For sure. Uh, Well, do you have anything else for Palimpsest, Josh? I don't find, and maybe this is because he's had to kind of step back a little bit, but I don't find his vocals as abrasive on this album. I yeah, mean, and I'm really sure the surgery his thing. style, but he's yeah. taking it down a notch. Yeah. Yeah. I've got, um, I think it switched over. I got done playing the instrumentals and it switched over to uh, Heretics and Killers from Kazaya. Okay. And uh, yeah, his he goes pretty high on that song, so it's he's straining it at times. So yeah, that makes sense. But seems like they've also like cut down some of their song lengths here too. I know some of these are just interludes, but it seems like in general the songs are a little bit shorter. Yeah, um, little shorter songs, little longer set list. The vocals are dialed back a little bit. Like this is a more bearable album overall. Um, I do want to listen to this one, just the instrumentals though. It's good. Trust me. It's, it's really good. It'd be interesting to see if they, if they continue that pattern of kind of like what you're just saying, where it's like, you kind of scaled back a little bit on the lyrics, you know, you kind of tone down the song links and you just kind of went more straightforward and just, you know, get in and get out type. If they'll just kind of continue on that, uh, on that. Do you path think they'll, put out another full length album i think they'll continue dude you think so i think they will yeah one of the things is i think um i know at least one of their members that leaves he sticks he he leaves but he sticks around as like a a session artist which is kind of like at that point is like what i mean you're already in the band why you if you're still gonna stick around i don't know it's right. kind of weird yeah it's a little odd um let's see I was trying to pull up here yeah so your session artists become the producer you've been using the last couple albums cam uh, mcclellan he'll stay as a session artist uh, on bass and then luke hoskins ends up leaving here in just a little bit but he sticks around as a, as a uh, session musician too and i think i i felt like at one point well, I thought maybe Arif stuck around as session two, but maybe not. But yeah, I think they'll still. I don't think just having two main guys is going to stop you, you know? Yeah, because they've got guys for like touring too. So, but. speaking of Luke, Luke Hoskins would end up stepping down from the band, and instead turn into a future session musician for the band. Hmm. Once restrictions from COVID-19 were lifted, the few members who remained along with several touring musicians would hit the road in support of their newest album. And finally, Josh, recently in 2023, the band would announce their intention to remaster and reissue their first EP, A Calculated Use of Sound. Your current lineup to date, Josh... Of full time members, that is, is Rody Walker on vocals and Tim Millar on guitar. 
final thoughts, Josh, on protest the hero. Um, I think, you know, I think you've been right from the start. This band was meant to be a, a post-rock instrumental. It's a musically driven band. Yeah, for sure. And the music is just so leagues ahead of the vocals and lyrics that it just kind of, it puts the whole thing off to me, you know? I've not been able to enjoy this the way I feel like a lot of people have because it's just really throwing me off those vocals. So, um, yeah, in, in another world where they had been just a post-rock instrumental, this could have been you know pretty high on my list. But If you like fill in the blank, if you like such and such band, such and such band, such and such band, then try out Protest the Hero. Um, kill switch engage iron maiden <laughs> um we can't I, finish this episode do you give us a third one <laughs> that they sound like yeah Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> that's all right. Well, you did say Carolina Spine earlier. Yeah, but... Um, that's more vocally, though, right? And that was just kind of in that one little spot, I guess. Yeah. Um. <sighs> you know, musically at times, if it wasn't... Because I feel like Between the Barry to Me is not as fast as Protest the Hero is, but musically sometimes it gives me some Between the Barry to Me vibes. Okay. Um, I will say that because of the way that they go with some of the riffs on guitar, it makes me think of that last, um, the way that they did the last, um, a life one's lost album where it was just like vocals over like solos through like almost all the songs, which is pretty, yeah. cool. you know, and it worked for them, you know? Um, but yeah, I think kill switch is a good. That's a good, and yeah, like he said, Iron Maiden too. <laughs> if Kill Switch and Iron Maiden had a baby, it would be a protest to hero. Protest to hero, a Gucci Gucci. Who? All right, he judged. <laughs> oh boy, let's get on out of here. You want to? Yeah, I want to put this. This this, me. this rating party is over. We're 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 backing out. Retreat, retreat back to the states. We'll be back, Canada. We'll be back. We'll be back for you. We'll lull you into a sense of security, you know. Uh, there's going to be a couple of, I think there's a couple of raiding parties coming up. But that second invasion, it's coming, man. It's coming. Second Canadian war is coming. Are we doing uh, Anne Murray next? We might. Canadian songstress Anne Murray? We might. <laughs> Who knows? You just got to stick around to the next episode. Mm. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at is survived by pro for news and the latest episode postings, not just on the show, but other shows as well. We have the history of the course after hours podcast where I sit down with my good friend and avid listener of this very podcast, Eric. And we talk about some of the bands me and Josh have already discussed. We just had a recent episode this past week about mailing in the Sons of Disaster. And guess what? We got a brand new episode coming out this week about the band known as My Chemical Romance. Bro, man. My Chemical Bromance. Yeah. A nice little cover band. Uh, I mean, like uh, two guys, like a Tenacious D, like two guys on, on uh, acoustic guitar. And they just cover... MCR songs on acoustic. They're the they're my chemical bromance. Okay. You like it? I like it. Okay, like okay. It. Nice. I'm a fan. I'm into it. Okay. Is that what we're doing we're, this summer? That's what we're doing this summer, buddy. That's what we're gonna okay. do. All right. Uh we <laughs> oh boy. We also have the Red Right Hand podcast, which has covered all six seasons of the Netflix slash BBC hit show The Peaky Blinders. And we're waiting for that movie to come on out in 2027. I don't know what it's going to be. 
It'll be a while though. Uh, and then Josh, last but not least, we are two weeks away from this Sunday night that we are currently recording on from the brand new episode season two of HBO's house of the dragon. And you know what, Josh, if season two of HBO's house of the dragon is coming out, my God, that means season two of throw the dragon is coming out. My God, my God, God. Oh, my science. Yes, it is coming. Season two. You have two weeks to go back and rewatch slash re-listen to season one of Throne of the Dragon podcast. And then you get your butt back here on June 17th. It's when, it get, when it's going to get posted. June 17th. And you you watch or you listen to season two, episode one, Throne of the Dragon podcast. You do it. Okay. Also, while you're on Twitter, make sure to follow my co-host, Joshua Lynn Gary. Yeah. Make sure to leave us a five-star review. (laughs) At Rod Kickass. Nice. Make sure to... Leave us a five-star review and write us a comment on whatever podcast service you're using. And if you want to listen to us and see our smiling faces, head on over to our YouTube page. Just search is Survive By Productions. That'll have every episode from all of our shows. Subscribe to the channel. Thumbs up the video. All righty. Till the next episode, we start off our little mini-series uh, while we're busy doing uh, Throne of the Dragon podcast. Nice. Get the hell out of here. Well, let's be like, we don't need him. Everybody else can stay. <laughs> there we go. Uh, the next man we're going to be talking about is... Who, what was that band's name? <laughs> well, we just, we just talked about him the other day. Dang it, what was the band's name? <laughs> Dang it, what is that band's name, Josh? Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait. Hold on a second. Seven oh, Plagues. God. Seven Angels. There we go. That's the next episode. It's coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, we'll also have our final episode of Throne of the Dragon podcast off season mode uh, as we get prepared for season two of Battles of the Dragon. All right, that's it. Covered it all seven times over. All right, buddy. Uh, see you next week. Yep. All righty. We'll see you. <laughs>